All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending. As I, I just mentioned, I'm Philip Rosebaum, the CSU Extension IPM Coordinator. Um, and today I'll be covering integrated pest management uh, using the PAMS technique. So that's prevention, avoidance, monitoring, and suppression. Um, if you uh, attended my, my first IPM talk that I did earlier this season, you might notice it's, it's quite similar uh, to, um, to that talk. Reason being, PAMS is literally just a small part of the entire IPM program. Uh, but it gets mentioned, PAMS does every once in a while, so I figured it's something, you know, worth covering and kind of tying that into, all, you know, to an IPM program. Uh, let's see here. So with that, uh, what is integrated pest management? You know, you probably hear it all the time and you probably know what it is, uh, but I like to cover, you know, the basics before we get deeper into detail. Uh, integrated pest management, it's basically that combination of our knowledge and skills that develop overall plan uh, to keep those pest populations below the economic injury level. Now that economic injury level, that's more of a uh, use more for insects per se. It's basically where they reach a certain amount of uh, insects per plant to where you, you start losing you know, money, start losing yield. Um, uh, it still applies for weeds and diseases. You know, if you reach a certain amount of diseases that infect your plant, or if you have too many weeds or weeds that are too tall, um, it's the same thing. Uh, you basically want to avoid that, that uh, economic loss. So there's uh, multiple steps to a successful integrated pest management program. Um, the first one, very, very important is pest identification. If you can't ID what the plant is, then you can't make, you know, that informed decision on how to treat it. Um, and that includes, you know, your weeds here. Uh, this is a handout that Paul O. Johnson, our uh, weed specialist, hands out. Uh, there's a picture of Palmer amaranth. Here you have your soybean aphid. Um, the gall midge, that's new insect pest. If you want to catch up on that, Adam Varenhorst has put a talk out. Uh, it's on our YouTube channel. Uh, and then you have some rust here. Um, but if you don't know what your pest is, uh, then you can't make the right decisions to control them in your IPM program. The second step, and this is the one I always push, I feel like it's the, you know, besides knowing what pest is out there, uh, you have to actually go out and monitor those pests um, and then record uh, what you see uh, so you can make informed decisions. You know, are those pests increasing over time or are they decreasing? Um, it's very important, you know, to uh, actually go out in your field and look what's there. Uh, so here's a picture of soybean. I think this was taken last year. It's all white mold uh, disease in there. Um, but this can be indicative of multiple other diseases uh, as well as some insects. Gall midge uh, will make your field look like this on the margins of your field. Um, so it's important that you actually go out into that field and see what the cause is. Cause you know, if it's a disease, you wanna use a, like a fungicide or, or something like that. If it's an insect, you know, you use your insecticide. Um, and then also I show a picture of a potato leaf hopper here. They cause what is known as a, a hopper bird and what it looks like, it kind of looks like drought stress. If you're, you know, sitting on the gravel road, looking out into your alfalfa field uh, so you wouldn't know what, what this cause was unless you went out to that field um, to see what the pest is specifically. Uh, the next, the third step in a IPM program is your management recommendations. So, you know, you can use SDSU extension. We put out a lot of handouts, Palmer Amaranth. This is one of our newer handouts, a little flip book. Uh, we also have our corn and soybean caliber pests in South Dakota. Um, as well as your common natural enemies. And this is, this is something important for IPM program uh, using uh, not just your pesticides to control things, um, but also, uh, uh, you know, your natural enemies or, or many other things, you know, that I'll cover, I'll cover later. Um, but using management recommendations like these, like this guide will tell you how to properly ID your Palmer amaranth, as well as, you know, the best techniques uh, to control it or completely avoid it. Um, in some cases. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to use SDSA extension per se. There are, I mean, you can just Google um, anything really and, and get the proper information of how to control things that way. Uh, but it will allow you 
looking up those management recommendations allow you to make that informed decision uh, to what to do. Uh, number four is prevention and exclusion. Um, funny enough, prevention is, you know, that first step of the PAMS technique, which I'll, I'll cover covering up, uh, coming up. Uh, but prevention, exclusion, uh, stuff like that is, is you know, your, your uh, where you do crop rotation. So you have your uh, uh, beetles here, your corn rootworms. Um, if you have a severe infestation of them in your cornfield, you know, it might be a good idea to put in something else, which we're really good about about around here rotating those crops, but you're basically um, preventing those insects uh, from when they emerge in the spring from infecting your field because you aren't providing that, that host plant for them. And then integrated pest management, you know, it's a combination of our knowledge and skills. Uh, so it's very important if you want a successful IPM program to use, utilize multiple different management strategies. Uh, so I just have a picture here, you know, you can use that, that residue cover if you have a lot of weeds uh, in your field, it might prevent them from coming up in the spring. Um, but also keep in mind, um, like bean, bean leaf beetle or grasshoppers, they like to overwinter in the soil. Uh, so if you have a heavy infestation of those the previous year, you know, you might want to change, change up your, your strategy, don't use that, that residue cover. Um, I also have our soybean and corn uh, pest management guide. Both of these are available in PDF format on our extension website. Uh, but what they cover is, you know, that last resort. They cover all your different pesticides uh, that you can use uh, in soybeans and corns. And that's, you know, fungicide, insecticide, uh, herbicide, all of them. Um, but that's always your last resort. That's something you don't want to apply that pesticide unless you absolutely have to. Uh, and then your sixth step, reassessing the effect of your IPM program. Um, so it's always a circle, you know, throughout the year. Um, and it's very important. That's why I have record keeping, you know, your, your pest monitoring. Uh, just record everything. Record what management recommendations, you know, you, you utilized. Um, if you tried any prevention or exclusion of those pests. Uh, just during the winter, look back and see if what you did um, actually worked. And that's very important for IPM. And also if you do uh, record everything you do every season, uh, you might be able to see trends over time. So if your weather patterns, moisture, um, things like that are similar to past year, you'll probably have the same type of pest show up. Um, so like this drought, uh, spider mites in soybean, they usually show up when it's drier out. So, you know, that's something you might wanna look for now. Um, things like that. Just record, uh, keep your records, and you can always look back to it and make even informed decisions. Uh, so this circle here, you know, that's a, a, the whole part of IPM program. Um, got to ID your pests, you got to monitor them, record, look at your available options, your management recommendations. Can you prevent, exclude them entirely? Uh, what management strategies, you know, are you going to use based on what pests you have? And then reassessing that um, at the end of the year. So that is IPM, but what is PAMS? Um, the PAMS techniques, they get mentioned every once in a while. Um, so that's why I kind of wanted to tie them into your overall, overall IPM program. Uh, and what it is, it's made up of four things, obviously PAMS. Number one is prevention. Um, the second one is avoidance. Three is monitoring and four is suppression. So number one, prevention, that's your first line of defense. And I'll explain each one of these in more detail next. Um, but that kind of falls obviously into your prevention and exclusion of your overall IPM program. The next one is avoidance. That's your second line of defense. And that falls into, you know, utilizing your multiple management strategies. The third one is suppression. That's, you know, if, if, if your prevention techniques failed and your avoidance techniques failed, suppression is kind of your last resort, the last thing you want to do. Uh, and then monitoring, I know it's, it's not in, in uh, order, uh, but the acronym wouldn't look so nice if M was at the end. But monitoring, it allows those informed decisions. Um, you know, and that's, that's something that's extremely important, going out and scouting 
your field to see what the cause of, you know, a symptom in your crop is. So our first one, prevention, as I said, that's your first line of defense. And it's basically the practice of keeping that pest population from even getting into your field. Uh, stopping it entirely from even showing up in your field. And I, I just put up a short list. This is by no means, you know, everything, um, but it includes clean, uh, cleaning your equipment and gear. Uh, so that might be uh, things like uh, if you harvest during harvest, you know, that's coming up here. Um, clean it out between your fields because in a lot of cases, uh, Paul O. Johnson mentions with that Palmer amaranth, it will, um, if you do have it one of your fields and then you go somewhere else and you harvest with that same combine without cleaning it out, you can spread all that weed seed uh, into your other fields. Uh, so you're basically preventing, you know, that weed seed from getting into your other fields. Another one is using pest-free seeds and transplants. Uh, you know, a lot of these seed companies, that's, that's something they have to uh, do in the first place. But if you have your own seed that you re reuse, um, that's something uh, to keep in mind um, that you, you clean that seed thoroughly. Otherwise, you'll just be moving that weed seed right back into uh, another field. Uh, modifying row spacing and just in plant, plant populations. Uh, that row spacing, you know, that can be something for like weeds, have a really close uh, uh, row spacing so those your crop fills in, the canopy fills in, stops those weeds from coming in, or adjusting your plant populations. That again is something you can use for weeds, um, but also the soybean gall midge. Adam mentions this in his talk. Uh, we've noticed if you have a higher density of plants, um, soybean plants, you won't have as severe or you won't have a soybean gall midge infestation. Reason being, those plants are closer together. They have a lot smaller stem and those soybean gall midge, they go into that stem. And if it's too small for them to get into it, you basically prevent that pest from going into your field. Uh, then you have your cover crops and trap crops. Uh, you know, you can use that based on what weeds or diseases or insects you have. If it's appropriate to have a cover crop or a trap crop, um, you know, that's why it's important to uh, record what you get. So if you have, you know, that severe infestation of uh, corn rootworm, you know, rotate your crop, which we're good about anyway. Um, you can also use pre-plant pesticides in cultivation. Uh, the pre-plant pesticides, you know, that's mainly for weeds, um, but you can also have your, your seed treatment. If you have a lot of insects uh, severity, you know, you can uh, treat your soybean or corn, corn seed to prevent that from going. Um, and then also cultivation, you know, before you plant, just run through that field um, and bury those weeds under the ground. Also irrigation scheduling, uh, that can be with our, you know, your weeds, but also insects as well. If your uh, field is really dry and you have a lot of uh, spider mites, you know, keeping that field moist with irrigation can deter those, those insects from showing up. Um, another one is clearing field borders or waterways. Uh, what you would do with that is uh, if you have a lot of weeds or specific insects like grasshoppers, if you clear those field borders or waterways, basically uh, burn them, uh, you can reduce the amount of uh, pests you have uh, that next year because you're excluding that environment that they overwinter in. So the next one is avoidance. That's your second line of defense. And what that is, if you do have those uh, those insects or weeds in your field, you know, you didn't prevent them from coming into your field. It's basically, uh, you wanna reduce the impact uh, to that crop. Um, and that involves using multiple different cultural practices. Uh, so just a short list here, uh, crop rotations, you know, that's kind of the same as prevention, but you can do that. If you have that corn rootworm uh, population in your field, you know, you you avoid them infesting your corn by not having it there in that field. Uh, hybrid selection, uh, host plant resistance, that's basically like different structures within your plant. So if you have a lot of aphids, uh, pick a soybean or corn plant that has a lot of small hairs on its stems and leaves that basically prevent it um, from attaching to that leaf and sucking the phloem out of it. Also maturity group, if you plant a soybean maturity group that where it matures earlier than when the pests show up, uh, you might be able to uh, avoid um, 
you might be able to avoid that uh, that uh, insect from uh, attaching to those plants. Um, hold on a second. It looks like we have a question here. Let me see in Pam's screen. All right, can you guys see the suppression screen? Is that where you're caught up to? Partial screen. All right, let's see here. Let me stop share here. All right, hopefully you guys can see that now. Better now, okay. Um, again, let me know if you have any problems uh, in the chat. Evidently the screen wasn't showing entirely. Um, well, I'll move on here. Uh, hopefully everything's fixed. Uh, so the, the third step, you know, it's out of order of PAM's technique, but it's IPM suppression or suppression. And that's your third line of defense. Um, that's what you use when your prevention and avoid, avoidance fail entirely. And you, you use that you know, to, to avoid the economic loss, that loss in yield, the impact of that insect. Uh, so there's four major tactics that you can use within suppression. Um, you've probably seen these before, your cultural management, physical management, biological management, and then that chemical management. You know, that's something that we're really familiar with. Um, in IPAM program. So that cultural management, uh, that's that row spacing and plant populations. Again, it kind of ties in with the other steps. Um, they are intermixed uh, based on what you have. Uh, your no-till or strip-till. Uh, that no-till, you know, if you want to leave that crop residue in there, keep your soil healthy, that's good. But then you also might have a lot of weeds, uh, that weed population in there uh, that might affect your you know, you're coming near. So if you have a lot of weeds, you might not want to do no-till. Um, then cover crops and mulches, you know, you can use that to suppress weeds um, as well. And then that mulches. Uh, physical management, cultivation or mowing, uh, you, you know, if that's more for like your weeds here. At our fields out at Volga, our soybean fields, um, we, we have a lot of different crops really close together. So we really can't spray all that much uh, herbicide. Uh, so we do a lot of cultivation and mowing of those weeds, and it does work for the most part, uh, but not as good, you know, as spraying. Um, and then baited or pheromone traps, those really aren't that common, um, you know, for our large areas, our large farms, fields here. Um, but that is something you can use um, uh, to trap. That's more for insects, obviously, where you, you know, you, you put out bait traps, they go to those bait traps. Um, but also, if you do something like this, uh, for some reason. Uh, also be careful because these baited pheromone traps can attract more of those insects into your field. Um, that does happen with uh, Japanese beetle in urban areas. Uh, so if you do do that, you know, watch out for that. Uh, the next one is biological management. This is kind of um, geared more towards your insects because there's a lot of different, uh, uh, you have your, you know, your carnivorous insects like your lady beetles, your praying mantises, um, and your spiders and your mites, predatory spiders and mites. These guys, sometimes if you have a lot of soybean aphids, they can um, keep those soybean aphids below the economic threshold because they'll, you know, they'll eat them a lot. And we do have those management recommendations, your lady beetles, South Dakota, and our natural enemies handout uh, that we, we give out at, at uh, live events. And then the very last one, chemical management, you know, we're very familiar with this. It's always used as a last resort. Uh, so again, here's our soybean corn pest management guide. Uh, we do update those every year and they are available as a free PDF online. Um, so, you know, that's something that we always use as a last resort. Try to use all of these as well as prevention and avoidance. Because um, with that chemical management, you know, we're starting to see uh, resistance uh, from insects and weeds to a lot of our different classes of insecticides or pesticides in general. 
Um, but chemical management, as I kind of mentioned, that seed treatment, that prophylactic, that means you use it before um, you know if the pests are going to show up. We only recommend using prophylactic treatment if you have something where you know you have a pest population in your field. Um, so like if you had a lot of grasshoppers this year, which, you know, they have been a problem in the mid, mid part of the state. If you know if you have uh, a lot of grasshoppers, you know, that's something that you might want to think about uh, planning for for the coming year. So the last part of PAMS, you know, it's the third, third letter, but it's really, um, it does it, it's used to help you prevent, avoid, and suppress those pests. Um, but monitoring is very important. Um, basically monitoring is scouting. You know, you go out into your field um, and you see what is out there. So here's a picture of Adam Varenoris. He's our state entomologist and Patrick Wagner. Um, he's our uh, entomologist field specialist out in Rapid City. And they're using sweep nets in an alfalfa field. Our uh, reason for that is some thresholds for insects at least, you do it by number of sweeps and the growth stage of the plant. Um, so if you do have a alfalfa field, um, those thresholds are available online uh, if you want to see them in detail, but get a sweep net like this um, for insects to, you know, see those thresholds. Uh, so monitoring, very important scouting. It basically allows you to see what pests are present in the level infestation. Uh, so here's, you know, a, a fellow field from last year that's just full of weeds. Um, here you have corn rootworm. Normally the adults aren't an issue throughout the, the summer, but they can if you have a really severe infestation um, earlier in the year. Um, you could see this. Um, so if you do see this, that means you have a lot of, you had a lot of larva um, and they ate a lot of your root structure. So that's something where you might want to do a seed treatment next year or rotate that crop out. Um, another one is uh, your corn leaf aphid here. Uh, normally they're not an issue, uh, but you wouldn't really be able to see them unless you went out into your cornfield and looked at your tassels. Uh, reason being, you can kind of see they're in the, the tassel here in the pollen. If you have a severe enough infestation, they do excrete a sticky substance called honeydew, where they can basically stop your corn plant from pollinating. All that honeydew will hold that pollen uh, to your tassel. Another very important thing is growth stage of the pest and crop, so weeds. If you look at your herbicide label, a lot of times they will have, um, you know, can only treat plants up to six inches tall. Um, if you if your weed population gets too tall for that insectic or herbicide to work properly, you know, you might have to look at mowing or cultivation. Um, on the flip side for your crop, I have a picture of, of a soybean plant and defoliation. Uh, so a lot of soybean pests are defoliators. Here's a bean leaf beetle here for reference. They like to eat your, your leaves. Um, for soybean, before R2, if you have 30% defoliation, you're at threshold and you should think about that last resort going out with a uh, uh, insecticide. 20% um, after R2 growth stage, uh, you know, if, if you reach that, you might want to uh, think about a pesticide or a insecticide. Um, so it's very important to know the growth stage of your pest and crop, um, especially, you know, those weeds. Um, and then monitoring, you know, it's scouting presence of natural enemies. Uh, if you do have some insects in your field, uh, you know, go out. If you see a lot of lady beetles, so lady beetle larva, I don't have a picture of that here, but you can, this is available online, lady beetles of South Dakota. Um, if you do see a lot of natural enemies and you're still below the economic threshold, um, hold off, you know, wait. Those natural enemies in some cases can keep that pest population below threshold and you won't have to spray uh, insecticide. Uh, that kind of falls into what I just mentioned. Uh, are your pest populations increasing or decreasing? Uh, so go out, you know, every week or every other week into your fields and just count. Um, a lot of those those uh, suggested ways to scout, speed scout, are available on our website. Uh, so just look at that. And if, you know, if you're like a soybean aphid or if your weeds are steadily increasing, you know, you might want to start thinking about getting your sprayer ready or your cultivator. Um, you know, deciding on your management strategies based on that. Uh, and then the fifth one, you know, gen general physical conditions of a field. Uh, so here's a picture taken in Nebraska. Um, 
you might think that this dampening off here of the soybean is because of, uh, you know, they, they sprayed this cornfield and it went into the soybean. That's not the case. This is actually a soybean gall midge damage, and you can see it follows that entire margin. Um, you know, you wouldn't know that unless you went into that field uh, and looked for it. Um, so that's why you have to know, you know, your general physical conditions of the field. Also, if you have a wet spot in your field, a low wet spot, that might be a good place where diseases will show up, uh, like white mold um, and other, you know, bacteria and funguses. Uh, so know your whole field's physical conditions, not just, you know, don't treat your field all as one big um, conglomerate. It is unique in different places. Um, you know, and that's where you can probably uh, spot treatment your field as well. So you're not, you're saving costs by not spraying the entire field for something that only exists in part of it. And then very importantly, and I touched this, touched on this in the beginning, uh, recording all this info, information for later use. Uh, so when you're pest monitoring, you know, write that down, what you find, where, and what quantity. Uh, write down if you try to prevent or exclude insects, uh, write down what management strategies um, you want to, you know, you use. And then after the growing season is over, look back at your records and reassess if what you did um, was actually appropriate. You know, that can allow you to kind of get that, uh, those trends figured out and help you make those informed decisions later on in the season or that, you know, the coming season. So that's IPM in general, as well as how those PAMS techniques tie in, ties into an overall IPM program. Um, but I want to mention at the end of the talk here, you know, those management recommendations. Uh, SDA Sioux Extension, we do put out a lot of uh, publications. We have videos like this, um, and I'd I, I like to just kind of, you know, explain those. So whatever our resources, our website is extension.sdstate.edu. Um, so if you go to that, you'll be able to see those pest management guides. You'll be able to see um, all of our newsletters. Um, plus, uh, a lot of our, our field specialists, they get reports throughout the summer. And if they do get a report, they will um, put an article up about it uh, in most cases. Um, so you, you'll be able to uh, be up to date uh, throughout the summer on what's out there. Uh, so here's just a snapshot. It's an older snapshot. But the overall designs is still the same. Uh, if you go to this website, this is a page you'll see. Just click on agri agriculture, um, and it'll bring you to our agricultural page. And from there, you know, you can do crops, cover crops, uh, other topics, um, broken down more, livestock, agribusiness, safety and training, natural resource con conservation. Uh, so, you know, it covers more um, than just agriculture. Well, plant agriculture, it covers all your other topics as well. Uh, and then I kind of touched on this throughout the talk. You have your extension handouts, um, our pest management guides, you know, that's that last resort, the suppression, your pesticides. You have your weed ID book, as well as, you know, Palmer amaranth, uh, soren, corn and soybean caterpillar pests, among other handouts. And then we have our extension personnel. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the year, you know, these are, are not all of them, but a lot of the ones that, you know, I recommend to call up. Um, or email and you can see you can look up them on our extension website there is a section of our experts um, but Adam Varenhorst he's our extension field crop entomologist so if you have an entomology question you don't know what something is he's the one to ask Garrett Schaefer and Paula Johnson they're our weed scientists they'll know they'll be able to answer any weed questions you have Emmanuel Payakama he's our plant pathologist he he'd be the one for you know your fungus or bacteria um, or diseases in general. Anthony Bly, he's our soils field specialist. Any soil questions you have? Uh, Sarah Bowder, she's our agronomy field specialist. If she doesn't know the answer, kind of like me, she'll be able to direct you to one of our other, uh, you know, specialists. And then Amanda Bachman, she's our urban entomology field specialist, so not really crops, but she is the pesticide education. So if you have any questions on a certain pesticide, uh, she'd be a good one to ask about that. Uh, and then lastly, our SDSU Extension YouTube channel. Uh, all these videos that we've done, these pest and crop Q&A webinars, we are uploading them uh, to our YouTube channel. So if you want to rewatch or if you missed one, you can go to that and watch it again. Uh, here's just a snapshot of that. So 
Uh, if you do SD ex extension and search bar, it'll bring you to the main page. And uh, here's the one from last week that, that Connie Strunk did. Uh, so you can click on that and watch that video. So with that, uh, here's my contact card. Uh, again, SDSU Extension IPM Coordinator. Um, if you want to get in contact with me sooner than later, I would shoot me an email. Uh, this is my office number. I'm loosely not in my office because, you know, the field season and stuff. Um, so I'm loosely not in it. But if you have any questions uh, for me, just shoot me an email at any time.